As the third example of the ASM based design, we will take up a ga game. See, dice games are popular both in eastern and western countries. When you go to what are known as gambling parlors in western countries like United States, you have these casinos where they have this gambling system by means of um, some handles and buttons, you simulate a dice throw and based on the dice value some activity takes place and further progress of the game is decided. Dice game has been very popular in India, we have lots of uh, variations of dice games popular in rural India villages even our scriptures talk of dice games and consequence of dice games. So, I thought it is appropriate to get a dice game example because the purpose is to tell you almost anything you can conceive of can be implemented in digital system and subsequently as a Verilog code and the FPGA implementation. But I want I do not want to adapt usually when you open a textbook from written in United States or mostly in US, you will find a dice game example invariably, which will put a dice throw and based on that some usually a card game. But I want to sort of use the same concept and uh, give uh, an example from our uh, uh, tradition of culture wherein we have this uh, dice game. For example, uh, one of the most uh, popular dice games in India has been the snake and ladder. That is, you throw a dice or pair of dice, you throw a die or a pair of dice and then the, the player advances in a chart marked with various symbols or pictures and then whenever he or she or she comes to a point of a ladder, he is asked to advance to a certain level and whenever he or she comes to a point represented by a snake, you come down by certain uh, squares or numbers. So, we will try to simulate it to the best possible way. So, this dice game can will have the following features. Unfortunately, this of course, in a dice game simulation you need two people to uh, play simultaneously find out who wins or who reaches the target first. We will also do it, but then only one player can play at a time. So, what we do is we have a dice, pair of dice 
uh, dice has 6 faces so you have total of 6 plus 6 12 whenever you throw a die throw a pair of dice the score can be anywhere from 2 to 12 and based on this 2 to 12 you advance the score start with a 0 0 score equal to the first starting square of a snake and ladder game and then advance by as many squares as the value of the dice. But to simulate the snake and ladder condition what I am going to do is if the score is less than number of particular value we will reduce a certain amount from the score total score that means you slide back and if the dice throw value is more than a certain amount certain value we will add certain value number to the score that means you are allowed to advance in the chart that way we will simulate our snake and ladder condition and again we will keep count of the number of attempts you make to reach the final destination and then the game is over as the first player is concerned the second player takes over at the end the two players can compare notes and find out which player has reached the target of the goal in the smaller in fewer steps and that player is declared the winner. This is the game we are playing. So, a, a game will have this type of front face in which there will be a switch or a button called a start. We have to when, when you normally the game is not being played nothing happens and if somebody wants to start a game you have to press the button once and create a single pulse. But normally when you do a manual pressing of a button in a digital system which works with clocks of high speed even the speed is not very high you will hold it for a while even if you hold it for some few milliseconds it will generate many clock cycles. So, the start pulse will last for several clock cycle of your system. So, we have to have a special circuitry which I am not showing here by which this pressing of the button even though you hold it for a long time it will only give one single pulse corresponding to the clock. If this is the clock on the system. Once you press the start anywhere asynchronously and keep on holding for something, what we get will be from this system even though you hold it like this, I want a start pulse which will start along a clock edge and last till the next clock edge at the clock edge start at the clock edge. So, I want really this is my start signal. So, there are two start signals this is the manual start this is the processed start or single pulse. I am assuming a, an electronic circuit which does this job which is not part of this design we are contemplating. So, this is what I am getting when I press my start. Then how do you simulate a dice throw throw of a dice pair of dice. You can have a counter running and you stop the counter whatever is the value of the counter that can be taken as the value of the dice. You need two dice each going from 1 to 6, but total can be 2 to 12. So, what we can do is we can simulate by a single counter which goes from 2 and goes on to 12. So, if I have a counter which repeats repeatedly starts counting from 2 and goes to 12 and the end of 12 again it starts with 2 and goes back to 12 and that and any time I stop the counter you will have a value anywhere from 2 to 12 and that is taken as the value of the 2 dice put together. Even though it is a single die or a single clock we will assume this to be the combination of the sum of the 2 dice. So, how do you know that means there is a clock which is running all the time whatever is the frequency that you want to run whenever I want to stop the clock the value of that counter at that time is taken as the dice value. So, there will be a switch here 
will call this T D for throw dice. Throwing the dice is simulated by stopping the clock. So, normally the it runs in a free running mode, the counter keeps running. Once you this is a switch, this is a switch which is on this position and you down it to this position, the clock stops and as long as you hold it in this position, the value of the dice is the given in the counter. The counter holds this value as long as you want. Again, when you are done with your processing, find out the value, add it to the score, subtract and add and all that you have done. When you are ready for the next game, you put this back into the free running mode, then the clock starts running and then again you throw it. So, the dice throw is simulated like this. Normally, the clock is running, the switch, the dice throw switch is in this position. We will call it 0 position of the dice throw and then the dice throw position is 1, the dice, the clock stops and freezes, it will be held as long as you want it to be held in that position. You take that number, add it, subtract, process whatever you want. When you are done with this, put it back in this, the clock starts running, give it a some time to so that it can become random generation again and comes back. This is how we do. That is all there is. The, the interface, the manual interface between the game and the electronics only these two switches. One switch which starts the game with a single pulse, the other switch is the throw switch is thrown from free running position to dice throw position that is all. Then what are the three things you want on the display? We have three displays, one is what is the total score? The total score can be I want it 100, we will we'll think of a game with 100 squares, instead of starting from 1 to 100, we will start it from 0 to 99, that way I can use a 2 digit decimal counter. So, the score can have a value of 99 maximum, minimum 0, 0 of course. Then I should know who wins by based on the number of attempts you made to reach that 99. So, you need one more counter called number of attempts counter. Theoretically, number of atoms can be 99 because it cannot be 99. Theoretically, the number of atoms can be because every time you add, add a 2, but then you can also go on sometimes you subtract 10. So, we will also have a 2 digit counter here with maximum value. It is assumed that you will not reach, you will not require more than 99 steps. Reach. Minimum value of dice is 2. So, that way you need only 50 steps to go to 100, but there may be in between several minus tons. So, you need to increase the number of attempts, but I am assuming that you will never, you will always put minus 10, minus 10, then you go on forever and score does not move. I am not foreseeing that condition. So, we will restrict the number of attempts counter to 99 and you need one more counter to show you every time you throw the dice, you do not know where you stopped the counter, where the counter froze, you do not know that. So, I need to know that score. Every time I throw the dice, I would like to know how much it is. See, that will give me happiness, if it is a large number. So, I need to know that. So, this is my dice value. So, there are three displays, these three are displays. One display will show the value of the dice on every throw, one display will show the total score up to that point and one display will show you how many atoms you have taken to reach that place. Two switches one to start as is a single pulsar, second switch to throw from the clock running mode to the throw dice mode, simple. And the game I will explain one more time in terms of an algorithm, this is the requirement, of course you have to require what is the procedure, we understand the problem specification completely, then look at the functional blocks required identify the signals required for the functional blocks, then go for the ISM and from the ISM you go for the implementation. So, before you go to the functional identification of the system or the functional parts required for the game to be designed and fabricated to implement that, 
I will have to specify the algorithm. I explained to you qualitatively, but let us put it in terms of steps. So, it is called algorithm of the game. What is the algorithm of the procedure, step by step procedure of the game? Push start to start the game. Once you push start, the counter will start free running. That means the dice throw can be done any time. Throw dice by using the switch I will put. You know, I already explained to you how it is done. Using the TD switch. That means taking this TD switch from the free running position to the thrice, uh, dice throw position, you now throw the dice. That means the die is cast, as I say, the die is cast. Okay? Now the game. Of course, first we are assuming before this, after starting, clear, maybe I'll add one step here. Clear, score. number of atoms. Both have to be cleared because I do not want to start with, I do not want to start with 0 atoms, 0 score. Then I throw the dice, using TD switch. Now, if the value of the die is between, I will have to arbitrarily fix some values. If it is less than 4, I want to give a disincentive or a penalty, more than 9, I want to give a incentive or a bonus and in between I will not do anything, I will simply add the dice. So, I will just put it in algorithmically, if dice is greater than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 9. Add score, add the dice value to score, increment number of atoms. If score less than 99, continue. That means go to 4. Continue the game. If score equal to 99, Now, if dice value is less than or equal to 4 or first I will say greater than or equal to 9, greater than 9, less than or equal to that means 9 also is taken here. Dice value is greater than 9, it can be 10, 11, 12, then I want to give a bonus. After adding the score, add dice to score, add a bonus of 10. Add a bonus of 10. And again, increment the number of attempts. Check score if score 
less than 99 go to 4 if score 99 stop three different i am explaining three different cases that's all this is not necessarily the way in which you should implement the asm chart the asm chart will make sure all these conditions are properly met then there's a next possibility where the dice is less than 4 if dice less than 4 add dice value the score subtract 10 from score as penalty again increment number of attempts if score is less than 99 continue continue or if score is 99 stop These are three cases I am explaining, that is all. You throw the dice, first there is number of terms 0, dice value is 0, uh, throw, I mean number of terms is 0, total score is 0. I, I throw the dice. The dice can, anywhere from to, any, dice can be anywhere from 2 to 12. The dice is between 4 and 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These six values, the score is added as it is until we reach 99. And each time we register the number of atoms, increase the number of atoms by 1. At the end, we will say the score is 99, number of atoms says whatever, that is the very end. There is one thing I have not clearly explained here is if after, before reaching 99, if I add the score, the score may exceed 99. Example, supposing my score is 92 and I got an 8 in my dice, 92 plus 8 is 100. If I try to add 8 to a 2 digit counter, the result will be 100, 1 will be discarded and 00 will be result. I do not want that to happen. After the value of when 99 is reached, whenever the score exceeds 99, we will retain it as 99 no, rather than rounding it off. That is something which I have not put in the steps. So, what I am saying is, if the score is between 4 and 9, the score is added, number of times increase and this goes on. Assuming no time you are getting less than 4 or greater than 9, all the time you are getting between 4 and 9, there is no bonus, no penalty keep adding until you reach 99. But in that enthusiasm, if the last attempt the score reaches beyond 99, you should cap it to 99. That is the algorithm normally. Now, there are two conditions. One is a bonus condition, other is a penalty condition. If any time your score is more than 9, dice throw is more than 9, that is 10, 11, 12, in addition to addition, adding this, in addition to adding the score, to the previous value, adding the dice value to the previous score, we want to add a 10 to the, the total. First, I add the dice value and then I add 10. Again, I will use the same system. If the score reaches 99, I will stop. But if the score may exceed 99, I will limit it to 99, so that I will not be unnecessarily getting a overflow of my counter. Likewise, the penalty case, if the dice value is less than 4, that is 1, uh, 2, 3, 4. In the penalty class, when the dice value is according to this, when the dice value is less than 4, that means it is 2 or 3, 
I first add the dice value and then subtract one. And then and if the score is in this subtraction, if the score becomes negative, I will make it 0, 0. Like I add 10 and top it off to 99. Here, when I add subtract 10, if the score becomes less than 0, you make it 0, 0. So, two limits of 0, 0 and 99 will not be exceeded. That is one of the conditions of the game, which I have not mentioned it very explicitly. Now, my students here say the original specification of the problem was 4 less than dice, less than and that means dice value 2, 3, 4 is penalty, dice value 9, 10, 11, 12 is the bonus. That means in between 5, 6, 7, 8 are the 4 values. That is okay. We can do it any way you like. Since we have drawn the ASM and the circuit diagram using this, I am going to change this condition without any confusion with the loss of generality of the design. Without any loss of generality, I am now making a difference. If dice value falls between 5 and 8, greater than 4, less than 4 and greater than 9, less than uh, greater than 4 and less than 9, normal condition. If dice value is equal to or greater than 9, that means 9, 10, 11, 12 and 4 cases, it will be a bonus case. If the dice value is less than 4, 2, 3, 4. So, that means 2, 3, 4 or penalty, 9, 10, 11, 12, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, bonus 5, 6, 7, 8, normal. This is a revision I am making. In order to satisfy the design, we have already planned for this lecture. It does not change the rule, it does not change the approach, not change the algorithm, only the values change. That means, again to reiterate, adding 10 as a bonus if the value in the range given, subtracting 10 in the range if the dice range is this. Otherwise, normally add. All these things are very clear. What is to be very clearly, explicitly remembered is, you should never allow the score to go beyond 99 and round it off or wrap it up. When the score reaches 99, when, when your addition of the previous value to the existing score, I mean uh, addition of the existing score to the new value of the dice or addition of 10 to the existing score results in a number greater than 99, you make the score 99 and stop the game. Otherwise, the person will be at a disadvantage. Likewise, whenever you subtract a ton based as a penalty class, the result happens to be less than 0, negative, make it 0, 0. Otherwise, your hardware design will be difficult and this is Nobody has a, uh, nobody understands a negative value in a game. See, it's all math, uh, computational concepts. In a game, you should not say you are negative value. So, because of this, we have put these two limits. Score never falls below 0, 0, even with the penalty of 10. Similarly, the score never increases beyond 99 with an addition of a score or with an addition of 10 as a bonus. This is one case which has very clearly understood, which has not been mentioned in the original diagram. With this, we will go to the hardware elements, very simple. We have this counter, which is the dice simulation, yes. Sir, in each of those parts, we have an increment number of attempts, that counter we are incrementing, sir. Yes. Would not it be nice if we, no sooner we throw the dice, we increment the number of attempts, counter? That is what we are doing. Anyway. This is one set of specification. Any design problem, you can refine it. The scope for refinement. He is asking whether we can do some incrementing in some other way. First of all, we have not seen here how we are doing the incrementing. Even assuming you have a different way of doing it, try it. See what I am saying right from the beginning in the ASM design is understand the specifications completely and design it the way it works. Your design is more efficient than my design. I will be only happy specification should be completely met unambiguously. That means, you have to ask for specification unambiguously. Specification should be given unambiguously and should be met totally. Within that constraints and more efficient design will naturally deserve price. Okay. 
Now this is the dice simulation. We start from 2, that is why it is a presetable counter, which means we can preset the value any value you want. The clock keeps loading this, incrementing it. Normally it is running, free running mode. And the display, the dice value comes here. And when you, when the value of the dice comes, this is the enable. This is the enable which makes the dice, that is the free running mode. If you do not put this in the dice throw mode, this is frozen. Dice throw mode, the enable is this removed. So, the dice value will be here as well as here. At that time, the value will be compared with 12. And if it is 12, we will load the value 2. So, that next time it again starts with 2, more than 2. That is, if compared with 2, 12, you do not want to reach 13. When the counter has reached 12, you you compare it and make it 2 again, so that instead of going to 13, after 12 it goes to 2. The one more load here, this load is for uh, starting. Whenever the beginning, when you are not playing the game, as in the power on reset, we need to this load 2. That is the value of load 2. We have to load value of 2 to the counter in the beginning. Now, this is a dice comparator, dice values be compared to see whether it is less than or equal to 4, greater than or equal to 9, these two signals will be generated. This is the increment counter, it has a counter which increments the number of atoms, enable number of atoms here. So, you start this counter, they clear, when they start the signal, this is cleared and this is specifically given every time you want to enable the counter by 1, increment the counter by 1, you enable it. For that one clock period only it will be enabled, so that 1 will be added, you know the value of this. This is a score comparator, comparator. whenever the score is there, you want to know whether this score is greater than 89 or less than 10, why? If the score is greater than 89, I cannot add a ton to it. When I add a ton, it should become 99, that is what we should know. When the score is greater than 89, we should know it. Similarly, the score is less than 10, we should know. We have to treat it as a special case. Score is less than 99, I cannot subtract 10, I can only make it 0, 0. This is the add subtract circuit, the dice value or 10. Normally, the dice value is added and it is stored in this register. This is the score register, score display. You clear the, you, you load this value of this from here, value of this. Now, whenever you want to add a 10 to it or subtract 10 to it, you select this. There is a selector here. Normally, the selector is 0, so the dice value gets added. But whenever you want to select a 10 to be added or subtracted, you select this and this gets 10. And that 10 can be added or subtracted. If add us is 1, it will add 10 value. If add us is 0, it will subtract 10 value. And whether this value or 99 goes to the score counter depends on where we are. If the score is greater than 99, as we see here, we'll go, score is greater than 99, adding 10 should not, score is greater than 99, adding 10 should not lead to more than 99. So, in that case, this will disable this, this is preset to 99 value. And this is the score display. Starting also clear this, this, this is cleared by the starting signal. There is one specific place where you have to clear this. When the result becomes less than 0, I want to start with 0, 0. Score has to be cleared to 0, 0. So, this is the clearing on subtraction. On subtraction, when the result is less than 0, we make this 0. So, the clearing will happen in the beginning of the game as well as whenever the score becomes less than 0 on subtraction. These are the various units. Now, the ASM here is we are waiting for the start signal to go, waiting for the start signal to come. When the start is not there, it is waiting. Normally, when the power on, you will have to make sure that the power on condition will lead you to this state. That is why it is the reset state is called. 
and once you give a start pulse, you have to make sure it is a single pulse. I already told you there is an extra hardware you have to put outside. The start pulse should not be directly used from the push button. The push button has to be debounced and given a single pulse. When that is true, again you wait here because it is not enough if you start the game, you also to throw the dice. So, when you start, when you are ready to start waiting for the throw dice, you have to load the first value of 2 and after that it keeps every clock cycle it going throw dice. Actually load 2 should not be done here because every time we throw dice it will remain in 2 which should be above this as a uh, here I can put this. So, when I am waiting I load 2 and wait because when the counter starts it will start from 2 and then the idle throw dice not true. We are going to freeze it this design there may be some flaws and that we will correct it in the next okay. version. What I am saying is on reset condition it gets loaded with 2 that is all. So, the next player starts the game again it starts there is nothing wrong in that it always starts with 2 that is what we want. Now, the ideal throw dice is not there the count keeps enabled this is what it is. The counter is enabled that means the 2 is keeps counting 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up to 12 and back to 2 this is that loop. But moment the dice throw is frozen dice throw is available throw dice is available count is frozen enable is not there anymore it frozen to add the score add score is adding the score that is here add score this value will be selected dice value will be selected added because I am assuming s to be 0 selection will be 0 and then it will also be load score after adding in adder adder only adds it does does not load it. So, I need to give a load signal specifically and also enable the counter. So, this E n O F A enables increment the number of atoms. So, I increment load the score and increment the number and then after adding the score only I even verify whether it is a 9 or less than 9 or more than 9 less than 4 and all that. So, I verify is greater than equal to 9 if it is not 9 if it is less than if it is not greater than equal to 9. I will have to see whether it is less than equal to 4 that we will see later. If it is greater than equal to 9, I have to add 10, but before adding 10, if the score is already 89, I do not want to add 10, I have to add only make it 99. So, if the score is greater than 99, 89, then I give this preset input which will select 99 to my counter. If it is not so, I will give this S to be 1 and that will add another turn to this and this will give the addition also. So, turn will be selected and it will be added and whatever is selected it has to be again added. So, this is called loaded. So, there is a load one where I load the score and increment the attempts, load 2 where I load add a ton or preset to 99 depending on the score being less than or equal to 89. On the other hand, if the dice throw is less than 9, this is y link go here, then I see if the score is less than 4, dice throw is less than 4. If the dice is not less than 4, that means we are in the safe range, we already added the score we have to go if dice throw is still on that is where we have to be careful. When I throw the dice I keep it down if I kept it down it is equal to only one dice throw. Again I have to return it to free running mode before I can throw it again. So, if I forgot to do it I will continue to wait for it. So, dice throw is still on that means you have not 
put it back to the free running mode, it will keep waiting idle too. On the other hand, if you have put it back on the uh, uh, free running mode, it will go and again do this till you do this dice throw again. Okay, that is over. If the score is less than 4, then again there are 4 conditions. I have to subtract 10, but I can subtract 10 only if the score is less than 10. If the score is less than 10, I will have to clear it to make it 0. That is called clear as that is the second clear. We talked about 2 clearing. Starting clearing the score, clearing on subtraction. On the other hand, if the score is le not less than 10, that means equal to 10 or more than 10. I will have to simply load the value because now subtraction of 10 comes automatically. I have put this as a dummy because to make it clear I have put this here S bar and add S bar that means this S will be selected as S bar which means 10 will be selected this is not S bar this will be S. Yeah, we have to issue yes. We have to issue yes and add subtract is an automatically done because if it is not add, it is subtract. This is a one signal add subtract. The previous mode we added it, in this mode we subtracted it. So, this this conditional output yes has been chosen, but add signal is not required, I put it in color and call it as a dummy. The reason is you should know that it has to be subtracted, there is no need to give a signal whenever add is not 0, when it add, add is add as is not 1, it is 0. So, it is called add as bar, add as bar need not be generated, when add as bar add as is not there, it is 0. But in order to explain that, I put it as an extra signal, this signal is not really required, yes has to be generated and then you load the counter again the score and then the new value comes. After that you have all these conditions you go back and wait here in the idle mode till the throw. So, you do the processing either direct adding, adding and again adding 10, adding and capping of 99, subtracting, uh, adding and subtracting or adding and clearing it to 0 all these 5 possibilities. Finally, you have to go back and wait for the throw dice to be removed. So, now we have the conditions the value between 5 and 8 5 6 7 8 score is added. Here the condition is it is, it is not necessary now one question will arise if this can the score become more than 89, if the score is more than 99 9 only this problem of 99 comes. Now, if the score is anywhere from 5 to 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, we simply add the value. If the score is between 9 and 12, 9, 10, 11, 12, we add the score value and add 10 also. In this process when we are trying to add 10, we may exceed 99, so we cap it off to 99. Similarly, when the value is less, the dice value is less than 4, 4, 3 or 2, we, sub, we add the dice value and then you subtract 10. When you subtract the 10, when you subtract 10, it may come to 0, 0. Uh, it, may, it may become negative, you cap it off to 0, 0. One case we have not taken into account. Actually, it is a flaw in the design, which just now I occurred to me as I am teaching this. Is it possible that you are in the 90s range and without adding 10, you may still reach 99? Suppose I have got 97 score and I got a 6, the score will exceed 99. So, I need to put a one more, one more condition here. So, here if the adding score dice value is 9 or not, if the value has become, if the value becomes 99, I should make it 99. So, I have to make a condition here, the 
this condition will be I will leave it as an exercise now this will be an exercise for you I, I do not even want to show where it is. This suffers one from one design flaw namely we are subtracting we are adding 10 only before adding 10 we are checking the score is 89. That means, if the score is 9, 10, 11, 12 before adding 10 we are careful if the score is more than 9, 89 there is no point in adding 10 we only round it off to 99. That will happen when the dice throw is 9, 10, 11, 12. Suppose the dice throw is not 9, 10, 11, 12 and simply keep on adding in 2s and 3 I mean 4s and 5s I mean not even 4, 4 is negative 5, 6, 7, 8 I always throw 5, 6, 7, 8 nothing else. Can I reach 99? Yes, I can reach 99 in any number of atoms let us say 15 atoms 20 atoms does not matter and somewhere around I am 96 and I got a 7 I will have to cap, cap it to 99. So, which point in this ASM will you modify which point in this ASM will modify to take care of the design flaw. The design flaw that you have in this of course, hardware is very good. The hardware is very simple, the algorithm is very clearly understood. I told you to refer repeatedly, so many times I will not repeat the algorithm. Hardware is very simple, all you need is an add subtract unit in which you can add 10 or add the dice value, and preset value can be either 99 or the current value, and then the score. So, very clear, clearing can be on the condition of subtraction or the starting. Here also we talked about starting with 2 going to 12, when the 12 reaches automatically going to 2. Initially, we do this loading and after every 12 we do the loading. So, everything is clear I compare the dice with this value 9 or 4 enable I mean um, number of atoms I count and the score I compare with 89 everything is fine only one flaw that appears in the ASM the flaw is in the ASM namely I am not giving you the choice of verifying the score is 99 when you do not have to add 10. When you have to add 10 because the dice value is 9, 10, 11, 12, you are seeing whether the score is 99 and then only score is more than 89 and then only you are adding otherwise you are capping it off to 99. This also should be introduced for values any value of the dice. Before adding to the dice so the score value after adding the score here the first time we add the score here before verifying the dice is less than 4 equal to 4 greater than or equal to 9, we have to verify whether the score is going to become 99 by this addition more than 99. If the score is going to be more than 99, we will go to 99 and stop the game. This has to be modified here, that is an exercise I am leaving it to you. The exercise comes out of my realization the design is not all that perfect. There is a design flaw which I just occurred to me as I was explaining this to you. That is how you should improve. Once you have a design problem, specification, even you do work out the specification, you think you are taking care of everything, but then suddenly something dawns on you, this is wrong, oh this is why this, this is not wrong, this will be a design flaw, that is all, that will be a design flaw. Suddenly you will find this more than 89 and something like will happen, okay, and the score will be high, you will be playing on, going on playing and you already need 97, you are expecting to win the game, suddenly the score will show 4 you will be frustrated. So, please correct that design flaw as a homework for this lecture. Thank you very much.